I can't fuck with snakes. I ain't all the way back from my people. I pray out for for fame. I'm finna turn up and get they ass a taste. I thought taste. I was global, they screaming my name. I'm everywhere like I'm the Chicago way. Way. Alright, let us know who you know on the Chicago way today. Zella Red, aka Xanax, aka Kush Killer Bandit, Zanny Phantom, you know. Okay, we got Zella Red in the building, y'all. So, how you feeling, man? I feel good. Okay, how you been enjoying the summer? The summer's been great. Honestly, I've been making like hella music. I've been working with some amazing people. And I just can't wait to release all this shit. But I hate the summer, though. Oh, why you hate the summer? Because, like, it's like my least favorite season. Even though my birthday is, like, June 29th, I still don't like it. Damn. You know, I fucking hate it. I like autumn, though. Okay, okay. So, um, you graduated school this year, didn't you? Yeah. How was that? That was surreal, bro. Like, surreal? Graduation was fucking crazy. Like, I swear to God, like, bro, I don't, first of all, walking in was insane. But walking across the stage was fucking crazy. Hey. That's why I knew like it was real, bro. Yeah, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, that's why I cried with the baby. Like, okay, okay, very emotional. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, so, um. Uh, let's get it all cracking though. So you could you could have been on BJU, you could have been on 16 Shotem, you could have been on True Teller, Corporate Media Cartel, mm -hmm. but you fucking with the way, so I appreciate you. Of course, bro. Alright, so. I'm gonna I'm ask, I'm gonna start off with this. So, Zella Red is your artist name, but yeah. you also got a nickname, which is Zan. So, where'd you get that from? Bro, my uncle, he, okay, so basically, my uncle had a blood pit bull, and he named it Zan. I was like, bro, that's like low key genius. Like, that's fucking insane. So, I was like, okay, like, I'm gonna call myself Zan too. Like, All right, so like, you got some inspiration that's somewhere. Inspired. Yeah. Alright, best. So, um, is that like an alter ego or is that just a nickname? Yes, yeah, it's an alter ego. Alright, so how would Every, you just... Every, like, um, era that I go through is like a different person. Different person. So, you in the Zan era right now? I'm in the Zan X era. The Zan X era. You ever did Zans? No. No, okay. I don't do drugs. Okay, I'm glad you said that because, you know, a lot of artists, they kind of, they fall into... The, fall into doing drugs and whatnot they yeah. you know, unfortunately get addicted and whatnot but i'm glad you're staying away from that so yeah, I'm all right that's a good thing so you know with you still being a teenager and all like i could still say you're getting started but you know there's some things that you probably still haven't learned yet but what are some things you have learned so far as an artist um i've learned to stay true to who i am and to not work with people that are like not the best type of people to work with just because of what they bring to the table. Okay. That's like the biggest thing I've learned being a teenager, like just in a scene period, honestly. And I just learned that being your most authentic self is like the best way to do it. Like everybody okay. always asks me, how did you grow? How did you grow your platform? If I just be me, like that's it, bro. Okay, okay. I like that so you know, going back to what you just said about like not collabing with just anybody just because they may have like something they bring to the table. Is that like part of the reason why you don't collab with that many people? Yeah. Okay. Because like, honestly, I'm a real spiritual person. And it's like, if your energy, like if we incompatible with the energy, it's like I can't like, you feel me, be on a track with you. Right. And I don't like to work with people that's like, because people always ask me like, why don't you collab with more like Chicago artists for real? I try to, but I don't like when they like push the gun violence message so much. Cause I got a lot of different fans and, and like everyone doesn't want to hear that shit. So you feel like it, it doesn't really mesh well with what you do? Not really, but I can though. Like, okay. I made drill music before, but I don't know. I just like, I feel like, well, I don't know. I was saying that that would be something to grow out of, but for me it was, so uh, not for everyone else. So like, is that so? Is that like something like, you didn't grow up as like that, like with the whole image and just the lifestyle itself? No, nah, I mean, I grew up around this shit for sure, like, for real. But that's not what I wanted to be, though. Okay. Because it's like, I mean, I lost some friends to gun violence, and that's kind of what set me down for real. Because at first I wanted to, like, you feel me, like, be a part of that because I thought that's like what's cool. Like, yeah, that yeah. shit is not cool. I swear to God, that shit's not cool. Right? So, nah. Uh, Alright. So, like, 
you know, just speaking of music in general, like, I could say, like, like, the way, like, when I listen to your music, I kind of, like, describe it as, like, alternative with a mix of rage, sometimes drill, but it's, like, really, you just do a whole bunch of stuff, so, like, how would you describe yourself, like, artistry-wise, like, how would you describe your sound? I would describe my sound as, like, futuristic, but, like, like you said, alternative, like, that's the best, like, general term to use for my sound, because I make everything. Right. So it's like, and then everything I make, I add my own, like, love thing to it. So, like, I make rap, but, you feel me, I could remix Lil Rilla and be screaming on it the whole right. time. Right. Like, you know? <laughs> I feel, I feel. So, yeah, but just, like, alternative. Um, Alright, like, who are some of the artists that influenced you, though? Mm -hmm. Like, when I was, like, first starting? Yeah, like, first starting. Uh, Kanye and Rihanna. Okay. Uh, and Adele. Oh, that's interesting. I love Adele. Oh, that's interesting. Them and, uh, Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, because I used to, like, be with my uncles a lot. I always wanted to be around my uncles when I was looking. That's actually what kind of got me into music at first, because okay. my uncle was rapping. But I just, I don't know, we would just listen to like real hip hop, like 24 7, like J. Cole, Kendrick, Kanye, Jay Z, like all this shit. So they like definitely gave me that drive to rap aggressive and assertive more than like super feminine. I try to say neutral. Okay. So, yeah. Alright. So, like, speaking of like, just like, artists in general like you you're related to like a couple of artists in the city and i remember you telling me that um one artist by the name of pgf nook is your cousin so uh did you did you ever have like a relationship with him um no we never had a relationship At but all. i met him before though okay he's like closer to my uncles than he is to me okay. i had reached out in like 2022 i think but it didn't really like go anywhere, which okay. I'm like fine with. But yeah, I'm not really that close to him. We met at a funeral. Oh. That's when I first met him. But nah, we I ain't gonna say we like you know yeah, yeah. sold in or nothing. Okay. Not. So like, if you had the uh, chance to collab with him, would you? Probably not. Okay. What well, is it because like of his style of music? Not just because like of what he does. Like I don't wanna uh, like. I just don't want to be associated with someone who I feel like doesn't really like value their talent for real. Okay. Not saying that he like just is like fuck it, but I don't really like what he's doing right now, so I wouldn't work with him right now. Right now, okay. But when you did see him like, you know, blow up and whatnot and become like one of the biggest artists in the city, like how did it feel to like see like somebody you're related to go up the way he did? I was so proud because I feel like People like to like downplay Chicago so fucking much. And when he blew up and then the collab with Polo G, like I just I love seeing people come together. That's what I love. For sure, so for sure. I was very proud. I love that. Okay, okay. For sure. Alright, so like moving away from just that, um, you know, with you rapping and whatnot, I remember like one time you had made like a story post saying that like you were gonna retire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I and I saw that and I'm like but you really just started now. What's making you want to retire? Right. So, like, at that point, like, what was going through your mind and what made you want to retire, like, that early? Honestly, I deal with, like, mental health a lot. Okay. Like, depression and anxiety. And, like, sometimes I'll spiral, which will make me, like, want to say fuck everything, including music. Okay. Like, sometimes when I feel things, like, really intensely, it makes me push away everything I love and everyone I love. It just makes me like push everything away and like isolate myself. So music is like such a huge part of my life. So sometimes when I like shut down, I shut that down too. You shut that down too. So you feel like, do you like feel like giving up time to time? Yeah, but only because of like myself. Yes, but I never really want to give up though. I just want to skip this part. You know? Skip this part. Skip yeah. like the grind part. Or, like skip the just what part? Skip the not being able to like go to every show part or not being able to do my fashion shows part. Like I want to skip that shit and like go to the part where you feel me. Like, okay. Everything is in my control. That makes sense. All right. 
So, um, you know, speaking of like another artist that you're related to, I, I see that uh, Benji Glow, is is he a cousin? No. Oh, he's your uncle. Okay, so what's your relationship like? We're really close. We have a lot of music. Like, like we go to the studio like all the fucking time. Like, all the time. I could literally like pull up the last time I was at the studio and it was me, him, and his friend. Like, oh, okay. Like, so like y'all y'all ever gonna drop a collab tape or something or? Yeah. Okay. We will. Well, we plan to. Plan to. And I'm saying that we will because I like to like put shit into existence. Yeah, yeah, like manifest so, yeah. that. Right, manifest I feel you. it. I feel exactly. You. I like those affirmations, but we talk about it a lot. Okay. We're always okay. like, oh, when we when we gonna make the red tape? But can we technically in the works though? So. Okay, okay. And Benji Glow, you know, he he was part of part of like. You know the drill wave when it was like really popping. Yeah. Now. Would you like consider him a, a Chicago legend? Like knowing that he was part of Glow Gang at one point, he was tied in with Chief Keef and things yeah, like that. I would because think about it. Like to me, a legend to me is somebody that has something remarkable and has made an impact with that. You feel me? So he's blind. He didn't write anything. But, right. And he still had that impact. Like I remember being in like fourth grade and I just like be in my class and I just hear niggas talking about him like Damn. oh like you heard this nigga and I'm like yeah I heard him that's what I'm fucking up like yeah, yeah I have yeah, that must be cool like, as hell yeah it was dope it's always been dope like my family's always been close to like all the like Chicago legends okay so yeah that's always just been, like a part that's what I mean though by like I could have taken that route yeah but you know I just like to rock out Rock out and be yourself. Yeah, but he is a Chicago legend. Okay. Me for sure. Okay, okay. All right, so, you know, one thing I could say that, like, separates you from other artists is how you, like, connect with your fans. So, you know, one time I seen you, like, do a mental health check on your fans, like, on your story. You just kind of asked them what they was going through and whatnot. So what makes you, like, want to connect with your fans that way? Because I feel like as an artist... I feel like your fans are a reflection of who you are. Okay. So attracting all these thousands of people, y'all obviously here because we relate on a level. If I'm rapping about being sad as fuck, like, and y'all listening to it religiously, of course I'm gonna check on y'all niggas. They check on me all the time. I'm gonna right, right. just be, you feel me, putting all that low vibrational stuff into their ears and not checking in. Like, that's terrible to do. Okay, okay. Do that, no, I, I like that you that you said that because um, a lot of artists don't even think to do things like that. Like they kind of like, me sick. yeah, they might take their like fans for granted and just be like, you know, you a fan, you a fan. That's that's all there is yeah. to it. Like people forget like fans are people too. They just like really yeah, know. just like you're a person too. So and a lot of my fans make music. Like last night, it was like three in the morning. I don't know why the fuck I was up, but one of them had texted me and they were like, "Yo, like you know, like I need advice." artists to artists and I will talk to them artists to artists because at the end of the day I'm not above anybody I'm not like below anybody so it's okay. like you feel me like yes I'm gonna talk to y'all I always talk to my fans I okay. feel like if you are artists and you don't connect with your fans what are you what are you doing this for okay okay it's like what's the point that's real that's real Okay, Zella, so, like, nowadays we see, like, more female Chicago rappers get, like, more recognition compared to, like, past years, so, yeah, yeah. you know, so how does it feel, you know, seeing females get more recognition nowadays? I love it. I, I'm a, look, I'm a proud feminist. On my last tape, Red World, I literally have a song called Feminist because I love women and I love the girls. And for the girls, like, every time I see a girl going up, I'm just like, I'm just so proud. Okay, okay. Time, like, who are, like, some of, the, like, the female artists that you kind of tune into? Um, I listen to Mellow Bucks from okay. time to time. I listen to, um, I mean, like, in the city or, like... Yeah, period. like, just period. Like, city-wise uh, and, like, okay. outside. Well, yeah, Mellow, I was just listening to her earlier. Okay. BK the Ruler. She's so awesome. Molly Santana. Who else? It's a lot, bro, that I just, like, go through. I listen, I really listen to my friends Okay. A lot. more than like mainstream, I listen to my friends' music like all the time, so Audrey is a rose, Ethico, who else is so many of us? I listen to a 
these underground artists, by the way. Okay. But Maze or Maze with Fire, Maze with, I don't really know how to say your name, sis. I'm sorry. I know you collab. I never knew. I hope you're not mad. But I listen to Maze. I listen to Baby Sosa and Maybe Baby Sosa. Osama. She's so fucking hard. Okay. I, I could just go on and on. All right. All right. Venus Girl, myself, obviously. Yeah, that's like, that's my main rotation. Like, all right. For the girls. All right, all right. And keep that in mind because like, you named a bunch of artists. I have a question kind of like related to that. Okay. So just put a pin in that. So um, going back to just like female Chicago rappers in general, is there like anybody you want to collab with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to work with uh, Mello eventually. Okay. She's like hella lyrical. And I feel like people don't pay attention to that, but she's lyrical as Yeah, well. they don't. So yeah, and I appreciate that. I love when people like use their vocabulary and their music, especially if it's like extensive. I really like that. I want to work with her. And um, you said females? Yeah, females. Star. Star bands? Yes. Oh yeah, she's art. She is. She's so like, I can just see the energy. Like every time I see her, because I follow her, yeah. she like does a lot of content. I fuck with that a lot. I will work with her. All right. And I like that no cussing thing that she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, and that's really a rare thing to like be an artist that could, you know, play with your words like that and not have to curse just to like right, fill out a bar. Right. Because people you know? always ask me like, they think I cuss in every song. I yeah. don't have to fucking do that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I cuss a lot, but yeah. bro, not in every song, bro. Yeah, yeah. Especially the ones I'm like producing, like fuck. Like, oh, you a producer too? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, let's let's pick on that for a bit. Like, when did you start making beats? Um, in twenty nineteen, late twenty nineteen, I was fourteen. Okay. And I had just learned how to record myself. Okay. And I didn't know how to like download beats from sites, so okay. I just figured that I would make all of them. Uh, so I was okay. just like, okay. You just did it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel you. I feel yeah. You. So like, you still produce some of your music to the, to this day. Yeah. Okay. I'm um Red Bro too. I produced one of the tracks on there. Okay. I produced okay. a lot of my rock music. Oh, okay. That's actually kind of raw, cause like producing rock music is hard if you don't it is. if I'm you don't really like, like you know. Yeah, like you see Steve over there, but honestly, bro, like I used to fucking make it because first of all, I don't even really know how to connect my electric to the MacBook or the um, interface. For right. Them. So I just used to make it, but yeah, I produced a lot of rock. Okay, so how's it? How is it like just um? being in like that space and just creating like like is it like hard to kind of just get started on what you want to do or does it kind of just flow no. naturally and you already know what you want to do it flows at a time? naturally okay and, um, it's my like studio is a safe space like okay that mic has seen the worst of me and yeah. the best of me okay so like you know that's just like home for me anywhere really like wherever my mic is that's where home Okay. And I could take that bitch anywhere. So. so, like, do you record yourself most of the time or do yeah. you go to the studio? I record myself most of the time, but if I'm invited to a studio session, I'm like, fuck yes. Like, if I can't mix something or I'm, I'm like having trouble mixing it, I'm gonna go right to the studio. Like, okay. No okay. way, bro. Alright. Let's, let's really like talk about your music for a second. I think you got like at least four or five like projects out from what I yeah. checked. Yeah. yeah, out right now. So I could say my favorite from one of those is was it Kush Killer Baby? You like Yeah, Kush? I like I like I like that ah! too. Yeah, I actually, you know, I That's actually, my favorite. Yeah, I fucked with that. Like that was that was my favorite one, so OMG, let's talk about Kush Killer Baby. Yes, yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. So I fucking love that project. What for, What was in your mind just creating that project and how'd you like decide it like what you wanted it to like sound like? First of all, it was senior year. Okay. I had just came out of the Zan era, the original right. Zan the era, original the Zan. Afro and shit. Okay. And I came out of that, and um, I went right into senior year. It was like that August, and I don't know. It's like I just started going through shit. Like my a close friend of mine got killed, Best and that piece. was like what the fuck. So that kind of had me in like a shutdown space for a little bit. Okay. But I just figured like why the fuck am I shutting down? when this is what's gonna push me to make my next big thing. Right. So I'm like, okay. So it was like after the Boo Festival I did. Right. When, when I really was like close to finishing, but I was working on it since like 
that September. And I was, I really wanted it to sound like old oh, Chief Keith. And I was doing <laughs> hella like old oh, Chief shit. <laughs> okay. I did this shit called um, Cook County Killer. Like, bro. Yeah. It was so 2012. Okay. But nah. And then I, I started with like the harder shit, like Bandit. I right, right. That shit. that shit was hard. That shit was hard as yeah, fuck. Yeah. So I started with that. And then I was just like, yo, like, this is gonna be fucking insane. Like, anytime it's album mode, that's like. The era, so the Bandit era was like my favorite of 2023. But yeah. making it was awesome. Like even the collaborations. That was the first project where I collab with people. Okay. So shout out to um, Nonchalant Dance. Shout out to my boy. Shout out to GMF Child. Those are my only features. Okay. And they rock. And thank you guys for making that with me. That's my favorite project. Okay, and it's crazy because like, like Revenge of the Loners was your first tape. Yeah. yeah, so like I could like when I listen to that and then I listen to Kush Killer Bandit, like I see the progression. Yeah. Like I'm like I see I see how much like you got better and how much you've grown as an artist. So it's like yeah, that's so pretty raw to see. It's like crazy. I do the same thing. Like anytime I feel out of touch with myself or disconnected from myself, I always listen to my old music. And okay. I listen from like Revenge the Loners to fucking Red World, like I'll and that kind of just what is what does that do for you? It reboots me and it grounds me because it's like okay, this is who I am, this is where I came from, and this is where I am now. Okay. So it's like it's always grounding. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so I think uh, I'm gonna kind of switch gears on you for a second. Like we do this thing called interview segments where we kind of just like ask you a bunch of questions like pertaining to like one topic so okay. i'm gonna start off with this uh segment called our uh, rapper turn blogger so you know rappers bloggers you know they have like this sort of you know relationship where it's like the rappers they're getting posted by the bloggers and sometimes we see rappers like nowadays tr transition from music to blogging like we see like FI j name -Man. -Man, we see <laughs> king yellow no shade, no, no. <laughs> king yellow we seen billionaire black do it. We seen take a Bro, do it. you remember the Twitter spaces? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was crazy. Bro, that shit was so funny. Bro, and then they put it on YouTube. Bro, I yeah. used to watch that shit. Bro, Not that shit real. was so funny. Not for real. So, really, what I wanted to ask you is like, you know, rappers and bloggers. So, like, would do, would you ever see yourself doing blogging? Fuck yes. But you would actually do it. Hell okay, yeah. you like one of the. Only people that say yes, so why'd you Bro, say yes? Yeah, yeah, because I love my fans and okay. I want them to see my personal life sometimes. Like, okay, I don't want everything to just be listen to this, listen to that. I'm gonna okay. drop this, like, no, nigga, this is what I ate today, this is what I'm right. doing tomorrow. Like, what God would be you see, what you're describing right now is vlogging. I'm oh, talking you mean like, what, like, vlog. I'm talking about vlogging, niggas? yeah, like, you, no, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, <laughs> why do you not see yourself doing that? Nah, but you know what. Not at least not right now. Not right now. But I actually do have a page called Revenge of the Loners. Okay. And it's it's all about me now. Right. But I have a YouTube channel for it too, and I was gonna post like all the underground artists that don't get recognition. I feel like a lot of these blogs be blazing certain motherfuckers that don't deserve the platform. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. But I would be that platform right now. Like once I'm set, like I would put. Other yeah, I encourage you to do that because like. People need platforms. Like they nowadays, nowadays it's like it's kind of different from back then. Like you need a platform. It's yeah. something I'm noticing more and more. You know, me being a blogger, I'm seeing how like you could you could be the biggest artist in the city. You know what I mean? Like at that time, but it's like if you stop seeing them getting posted, you might forget about right. them. Right? You might, bro. You, you might see a lot. I ain't yeah. gonna lie, bro. See what I'm saying? That's all fuck. That's all <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. For real. Nah, for real. So a lot uh, of niggas need platforms. Like, and then it's like. I don't say it's sad because I don't want to get like sentimental with it, but yeah. it's like definitely humbling to see people that don't get platforms just quit. Just quit. Because it's like, fuck, like, if you got posted how I get posted, like, you would probably be more motivated. That's, That's true. Why, like, people ask me to post that shit, I'll just post it. Mm. Fuck, I'll just post that shit. That makes sense. Okay, so. I'm going to give you another segment. We, I call this Lil Reese's Research. So you know who Lil Reese is, obviously, right? Yeah. All right, so you know how like he's in interviews and they might ask him about certain things and he, he may not know about what's going on. he just be like, oh, I need to do my research on this. So yeah. I'm going to kind of just ask you about different topics. And if you don't know about that topic, just say, I got to do my research. Okay. All right, so first question. Well, not question, but first topic. 
Sexy Red and Chief Keep got a collab project on the way. Do you know about that? Yeah, I do. I ship them more than I ship him and that Kayla girl. And Kayla B. Okay. Yeah. Why do you Why do you ship uh, Sexy and Chief Keep? Because they both gangster as fuck, sexy, funny as fuck, and so is Chief Keep. Okay. Okay. Bro, somebody show me his laugh. Bro, that shit, I ain't gonna lie, that shit is sick, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right, next topic. J Main made a cereal box called I forgot the name, but it but it had Lil Reese's face on it. And it was like chocolate wolf something like that. <laughs> you seen about you seen that? No, I gotta do my research right. on that, bro. Alright, that's something else you gotta do your research on. Alright, so Cashmere made a song for Glock Boy Bobo, and he's the only one that has that song. I don't know him. You don't know Glock Boy Bobo? No. Never heard of Glock Boy Bobo? No. Okay. I'm sorry. Gotta do your research but on I know Cash. You know Cash from here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another topic. Amari Blaze said that she wished Lil Dirt was signing more artists that was pushing peace and instead I of violence. I fucking agree. Did you see the rent I went on? What yeah, she said yeah that? that rent was yeah. crazy. So. Yeah, because you, I really don't like how people be treating her. Because they be saying, like, she snitched, she snitched. But even if she did, who cares? Like, bro, they act like she ever said she was never gonna snitch. Like, right. it would be a difference if she was like, snitch K. Right, right. Snitch. Okay. But she never said that. So it was like, you okay. feel me? I'll fuck with Amari Blaze. Okay, I'm gonna ask you this. I'm gonna ask you this. Do you feel like because she's not in the streets, nothing she does should be judged by a street code? Yeah, I mean, you can't, like, have that mindset and try to, like, First of all, nobody should be judging no fucking body. Ain't nobody God. No, nobody have a hell to send nobody to if they don't like what they did. So okay. shouldn't nobody be judging nobody. That's first things first. Second of all, she's not a street nigga. She's not a street, you know, woman. She's not like Blazing Doll and Mellow. She from the birds, bro. Like okay. she don't and then she don't even rep that shit for real. So it's like, how are y'all trying to make her take accountability for some shit that she don't even believe in? Okay. Like, that's just stupid to me. That's illogical. I figured. Okay. Uh, another topic. YFG Faso got backlash for posting a picture of the Baphomet, which is believed to be a satanic symbol. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And um, yeah. honestly, I do want to talk about that because he not even... It's like to give him backlash, but not give Polo G backlash. And he also posted the Baphomet. Oh, he did? Yeah, I never did. seen that. Yeah, he definitely did. Okay. Or he either posted it or he had the bathroom at chain. Oh. But a lot of these niggas, like, I'm not even going to say niggas, but a lot of these drill rappers are very satanic. Like, you can't, it's no way that you can listen to somebody brag about murdering somebody and not think that they have a demonic connection to, you feel me, something like the bathroom. Like, Okay, for example, like, XXX and Tassion, rest in peace, I fucking love X. But X was a, I mean, it's in a documentary, they talk about him worshiping the bathroom. It's not as rare as you think. Yeah, like, a yeah. lot of people worship, people I know worship the bathroom, or know of worship him. You personally know people that worship the bathroom? Yeah. That's crazy. Hell yeah, because honestly, what you gotta know is that the industry is full of a lot of different people. Right. And a lot of these people will do what it takes to be on top. Okay. Simple as that. Are you one of those people? Yeah. So you would do it. But whatever. I'm not from the like, you feel me? I'm sold in. I will never be sold out. Okay. So then. That's the whole point explain that. Explain right. that. Okay. What is sold in versus sold out? Sold in is my brand. That's like my clothing line. That's just the whole like, like BK the rule of level five. Mine is sold in. So that's like everything zen. But so then it's like. You put your all into something. Okay. Like you don't sell out for anything. You stay true to yourself. You put your all into your craft. You put your soul into your work. And yeah, that's what you like. You know, market and capitalize off of. So out to me is like saying that you sold out basically. Okay. And it's the last topic I'm gonna ask you. So not ask you, but tell you about. So KB Nini said that Vaughn of 1700 looks like Arthur and then Vaughn responded by saying he would he, fuck would, a little, he would fuck a little lad. First of all, if she don't consent to that, he gonna have some explaining to do. Okay. Because as far as I know, I, don't, I never remember her saying she wanted to have sex with Vaughn. Okay. But I mean, personally though, Vaughn is hard as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. 
Oh, you like his music? Yeah, I love this music because okay. it's it's lyrical and like I don't really agree with the things that he talks about all the time. Right. But the shit is hard. Like you can't act like it's not a banger. Everything like everything I've seen from him has been a banger. I ain't gonna lie. I agree. I bump them all the time. Like I fuck with Nene too. Nene, like we literally met in one year. Like I think it was yeah, that studio session. Madness. It was in March Madness. Yeah, she was like. The person I was going to Oh, yeah, I remember. Something. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. That's how I met her, but she's cool as fuck. Like, uh, speaking of Nene, like, how, how is y'all relationship like? like? We cool, but, I mean, yeah, we cool. We're friends. Right. We were supposed to do a show, but I don't know. She, like, never texted me back about it. We haven't really talked since. Okay. Playing that. But the show looked cool, though. Okay, and you would collab with her if given the chance, right? Yeah. All right, better, better. Cool, so... I'm gonna ask you, getting back to like, you know, the regular questions and you and whatnot, so I'm gonna ask you this, so like one thing we've seen recently is how like more female rappers been making drill music, but the thing is they been getting backlash and yeah, they just they get do. told, and they just get told to stay like in a female's place, that's more of a male's thing, so yeah, how do you feel, pe how do you feel when you see people criticize female rappers for making drill music? Um, it infuriates me for some men to believe that women can't also be drill rappers. Music is not for any specific gender. Music is the language that we speak as artists. That's not like, oh, okay, you can't speak like this because you're this. Like, okay. what the fuck? Like, bro, women can do anything a man can do, except for like, you know, the obvious shit. But when it comes to this music shit, Women are running that shit. Running that shit. It's funny you say that because that's true. Really like we see, shit. like if you look at the industry, we see sexy, we see Glorilla, we see Ice Spice, we see Lotto, we Fuck see, yes. we see Megan. Like but we see a whole, a whole ton of female artists just running what the industry. What I will say though okay. is that I was having this debate with some of my music friends the other night, and it was like basically like the Nicki and Lotto or the Nicki and Megan beef being like just as. I guess important as uh, Kendrick and Drake be, and I have to disagree there. That, that shit will never be as important as that because Kendrick and Drake are two people that can actually like, you feel me, go here and here like that. Okay. I feel like it's like a lot of women these days aren't really on Nicki level to do something. Like as that. far as like, just like her level in the industry or yeah. just okay. Like in the industry, like don't get me wrong, a lot of females and women can rap. Like fuck, like men can actually rap. Oh yeah, for sure. She's actually very cool as fuck. But I feel like, as far as like an industry level, like I don't, I can't really see Nicki having a like a, a profitable beef with anybody other okay. than like maybe Lauren Hill and they not even in the same way for him. Yeah. Okay, so. Or like Lil Kim, but you. Lil like, Kim. Okay. Right. All right. So, who would you consider like the best female rapper in the industry right now? In the industry right now. Yeah. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. I like I like that you say that because she hasn't released the album since the nineties. She's 90s. amazing, and, and that's the problem. That's yeah. the exact problem, bro. She hasn't released an album since the nineties. That's crazy. But I say her because it wasn't so sensual when she like came to the mic. It wasn't like too much sex being mentioned. Okay. And when she did mention the other gender, it was to uplift and not to really like seduce. You know? Right. I'll fuck with that. Okay. So, like, I like how you just mentioned how, like, Lauren didn't really push sex too much in her music. So, mm -hmm. how do you feel, like, when you see female artists get pressured to, like, keep it sexy and just have, like, this certain image of, like, the way they look and whatnot? I think it just reminds me of how, not to be, like, sexist, but how easy men are to be controlled by women. Okay. And it's like, when it comes to, like, you know? Right. But it, it really like kind of makes me sick to see so much like sex rap. Because mm. women are like more than that. Like it's more that we bring. Like we literally bring life into this world. But I mean I can see but it's like I feel like if they talked about that more than like just bringing life to niggas that's already living a life. It's like I feel like it would be more impactful. Mm. But again the industry is demonic so. Okay. Sex is like a, a huge thing and shit like that. Do you feel like once female artists get in, in, get into the industry, they're like forced to push that more? Um, a little bit. Cause I mean, if you look at Doja Cat, 
Okay. And her pop career was like so much like body, you know? Yeah. Versus when she tried to leave her label, it went over to shit like attention. Okay. You know? So I feel like you do maybe have to do a little bit more with your body. Interesting. I don't think it's like a strict obligation, but it's definitely an agenda that's being pushed. Okay. So yeah, I believe it's an agenda. An agenda. Sure. Okay, so like with you being a female artist, if you were to get into the industry, like would you push more of that type of image as far as looks? Or is that something that's not for you? No, because, I mean, honestly, I'm more of a, like a masculine female a little bit. Okay. So, I definitely have a balance, but, like, I'm not super, like, oh, look at my body, like, you know, I'll, like, post on the gram, though, but, like, when it comes to my music, that's not something I would ever push in my music for real, for real, because it's, like, I like rap. Like, right. And I'm not saying sex rap isn't rap, but I like hip-hop type shit. Hip hop type shit, okay. I like like that real shit, not so much of that like demonic shit. Okay. I push God in my music. Jesus. Came. That's a good thing. Push, keep pushing God. So, yes. alright. So going back to what you said about like when you were naming like all the, like the underground rappers that you listen to and know of, like I think like correct me if I'm wrong. Like didn't you used to be part of like a collective of artists? Yes, how the fuck is she Yeah, see, I have a good memory when it comes to things like that, so. Yeah. Alright, so, like, what was it like being a part of, like, a group? Um, well, the collective was called Dead House. Okay. I still talk to some of my boys. I was the only girl in it, but it was cool. Like, I was, like, 14. It was when I first really came into the underground scene. Okay. And it was dope, like, especially seeing all the other artists around us grow. And then, you know, being a kid, it's more innocent than it is now. So it's like, yeah. you know, we all, like, it was nothing in our way to school. So Makes it was sense. Like, that shit was like, it was like a family. They always be family to me. Okay. Six, always gonna be my brother. Him, I, okay, I don't know, because they've changed their names a lot. Okay. But, let's sleep. If you see this, you are always gonna be my baby bro. All right. And Jay, I love them. It was great. But I will say that groups don't last. They don't. They don't last. Yeah. They just don't. Why like, do you Why do you think that is though? Because I feel like maybe everyone's supposed to grow out of everything eventually. Like oh. we're always supposed to evolve. I'm not saying like friend groups don't last, but like music groups and bands and shit don't really last that long. They don't. But when they are a thing, like it's a For sure. So like, did it surprise you to see like the girls who made, you know, Mouse Couture split up? Um, no, no, but so fast, yeah. Yeah, it did happen fast. Like, it, it was, I think it was only a year. I think, <laughs> I think it, it wasn't even like a year. You know it? Yeah, yeah like I expected them to do like Rolling Loud together. I think they did. I think I they did I too. I think they did too. Like, but I expected them to do like hella shit together with that. Because that's something did really fucking good. Right. But I don't know. I think um, I think they just outgrew each other. Like, I fuck with all of them though. Like, especially Money. Like, she had this. I feel like she underrated. She had this fuck. So that's like your favorite artist from that group? No. Oh, you just fuck with her the most? No. Know? Oh, I so who? Just, I fuck with her. <laughs> oh, you fuck, oh, okay. Who do you fuck with the most from that group? Mm, probably Mellow. Mellow, okay. Probably Mellow. Okay. And that's like no shade to Mari or nothing. Right. I love Mari. Right, right, because they all talented, so. Right, they yeah. all talented. And I feel like a lot of people like try to like start a beef between them before it even got there. Like, right, I, other, I saw that too. Other girls on your that. page was like just saying like weird shit a little mm -hmm. bit. No, right. No, they're all great. They're all beautiful and stuff. Alright. Alright, so, you know, for what I see, like, I could assume that, like, you do a lot of things yourself. Like, you know, you record yourself, you promote yourself. So, I mean, I promote you too, obviously, but, yeah, yeah. You, but, you, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Like, you do, yeah. you do a lot of stuff yourself. Like, would you consider yourself, like, a very independent, like, artist? Yeah, I do. And, like, sometimes that shit's a curse, too. Like, it's... 
something that I had to learn, like how you asked me earlier, is that it's okay to ask for help. Mm. Like I wanted to do everything myself because I didn't trust anybody. I still don't trust nobody, but it's okay to like, you feel me, work with people. Right. It's like, you know, that's just what this is. It's networking and growing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm hella independent. Like, if it was up to me, like, nah, for a long time, like for years, I would never like, express myself deeply on somebody else's beat. So I'm oh. like, why the fuck would I cry on another nigga beat? Right. Like, I'll just make that shit right. Because <laughs> hell, uh, people be trying to use shit against me. I don't like that. Okay. But uh, I would do everything myself if I could. For sure. Okay, so like, you know, just being, being independent, you know, it's kind of like easier when you have like a label because they'll really handle a lot of stuff for yeah, you. Yeah, they so do. They really yeah, they do. do. So, you know, keep it with that in mind. Like, would you ever sign with a label? Yeah. Okay. I probably would. But the goal is to be independent, though. The goal is for me to be independent. You know? Okay. Like, that's what this shit is gonna be. It's gonna be so. Like, so then it's gonna be a label eventually. Oh, oh so like you have like that in mind. Like, you have that future aspiration to like create a label of your own? Yeah. Okay. I'll be writing all this shit in my own um, journal. Okay. Like everything I want for my brand and myself. Obviously. Okay. So like, is there anything you've written down that you actually achieved so far? Yeah, I wanted to do some shows and I did it. Like before, I was like respected as an artist. Like everyone would like look sis me. Everyone would be like, oh, like you know, I'm at level. You're not this. You're not that. So I had made a list of everything I was gonna do. And it was um, at least one interview, at least two shows. I wanted to do um, like three albums with no features. Okay. And I wanted them to like elevate my platforms, and they did. I wanted to, um, shit, I wanted to work with some people, and I worked with them. Okay. Like even people I used to look up to, I'm performing with them later tonight. So that's like. That's what's up. Yeah. Okay. So that's something. Okay, okay, so, um... I've been writing all this shit down, because I'm, like, really spiritual, and I believe in manifestation. And writing down things is, like, a really good way to manifest it. Okay, so, are you religious, or are you just more spiritual? No, I'm not religious, like... And I feel like people will take that shit and be like, Oh, hell, Satan, oh, he's selling... <laughs> like, bro, people... He would be like, oh, you want you want hell to accept you so bad. Somebody told me that shit. Damn. They were like, you want to be with the devil so bad. No, I don't want to be with the devil so bad. I pray every day. I pray as soon as I get up, before I eat and when I sleep. Or sometimes I do it like whenever because it doesn't fucking matter. But I'm not religious, so I'm just spiritual. But you believe in a higher power. Yeah, I believe in the source. In the source. I call God the source. Okay. Okay. All right, so... um. That's like back to that Baphomet shit though. Like people, the Baphomet is a deity. A deity, yeah, yeah. It's a deity, so it's like people can worship whatever deity they choose to worship. You can work with whatever, whatever um, spirit that you want. Like it's a lot of people, not even just in the mainstream, but in the underground industry that work with a lot of gods to okay. like big places. It's okay. just what it is. All right. Like the same way you pray over your shit, other people would work amongst these spirits to like achieve shit. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm gonna switch gears upon you for another second. So um, I got this next segment. I call it the health check segment. So basically, in this segment, I'm gonna kind of just like break it down real quick. So you know, me being a blogger, you know, I've had to like. Grown to, grown to like realize that artists are humans too and they go through things the same way I go through things like people may not know that I go through things they kind of just see me as a robot behind the page <laughs> and it's like <clears throat> you know they, they might happen to the DM they might just send something they won't say anything they'll just send something and expect me to just post it I'm like yeah, but I'm a person too I'm not a robot you know and, so, and sometimes I'll, I'll just check up on people see how they're doing and whatnot yeah. but you know for this segment I kind of want to just ask you like where you at mentally Mm, well, mentally I'm kind of dealing with insomnia and like really bad anxiety. Okay. Like a few days ago I had like the worst panic attack in my whole life. I had to go to the hospital and she was really scary. 
So that kind of like made me want to shut down, made me want to say, fuck the music for a little bit. Right, right, right. To like reconnect, but no, nah, I deal with anxiety a lot and I get like seasonal depression. Okay. So summertime is when it happens, so I hate the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do hate the summer. But um, I mean, I guess overall, like to take things with a grain of salt, I'm pretty good. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't complain about anything right now. All right. Would you say you're happy? No. No. Okay. No, not really. Not really. Okay. Well, we get there. You think you're gonna get there? I know. You know you're gonna get there. I like that you said that. You know you're gonna get there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I got this next segment. I call it message for the youth. So, I just wanna kind of like ask you. You know, you was you was a youth not too long ago. You know, you just yeah. you just had turned eighteen. Forever young, so like, you know, <laughs> you might see like uh, some kids on the street. They might see, they might be fans of your music. They'd be like, "Yo, Zella, Zella Dude, Red." I dated this guy, uh -huh. and he was like, at the because we didn't graduate from the same school. Right. He was like, "Yo, like people at my school knew who you were." Oh shit! How'd that feel? <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck? Like, how could you fumble that?" Damn. Like, pussy. <laughs> like, yeah. That felt amazing for me, though. That okay. So, so has fa like has any fans actually ever like, you, like have you met any of your fans? Yeah. Okay. I, um, my last show, okay. I was it was like a tent outside. Right. That wasn't where the performances was. At least at first, because after I left it, right. Right. But I was in there with my friend V, Victoria Vanity, and okay. this guy. He was in there. And he was like, "Yo, like I know you since this ops." Damn. I'm like what the fuck? <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so going back to the segment, so, yeah, so, like, you might see, like, you know, youth, like, kids just come up to you and be like, yo, Zella Red, I really like your music. I want to be just like you. But, you know, they're just kids. They don't know, they don't they know don't much. Know. They don't know any better, but you do. Lord. Yeah, you do. You know better than them because you're older. You've been yeah. through more than they have. So, like, I want to ask you, like, what's your message for the youth? My message for the youth is to... Uh, Stay in school, no matter how much your spirit wants to rebel against the system and shit. Stay in school because it's a lot of opportunities in school. It's a lot of like people in school. When I was in high school, it wasn't really nobody like me for real, for real. Okay. But it was still some dope ass individuals. And you can meet people. And you can like find your people sometimes in school. I would say that now. Don't try to follow after what's trending, because a lot of the shit that trends is not really good for real. It's just all brainwashing shit. Okay. So be your most authentic self. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not that motherfucker because you're definitely that. I like that. I like that message. So with the. Yeah. Always believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, ain't nobody gonna believe in you. That's true. Simple. That's true. All right, so. Would the younger you take the advice that you just said now? Fuck yes, but I would be hesitant though because the younger me wanted to fit in. I wanted to be just like these NPCs. Damn. So I, I start getting older and I just realize like, nigga, why the fuck would I want to be y'all niggas? Like, <laughs> bro, I'm literally me. My energy is only my energy. Can't nobody really like replicate the energy I bring, can't nobody really like, you feel me, do what I do. Yeah. So why the fuck am I trying to be like other people okay. that are really sad? A lot of people that we look up to sometimes as kids be sad as fuck. Damn. I hate that. Okay. I hate that for us. I do hate that. Um, getting back, there's one like, there's one more person I want to ask you about and his name, he goes by the name T. Scotty. I believe y'all went to the same school. We went to the... <laughs> Alright, so... Bro. What's y'all like relationship like? Bro, I fuck with Trent. I mean, T. Scotty. I'm about so to say. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I was got the government then. I just called him that. Because, like, that's why I met him at. So yeah. He was going by Trent. Okay. But I fuck with Trent. Like, that's like my brother. We was like, we went to the same school. We went to Prospectus. But I got expelled, so I was like, fuck. Damn, like, what you getting expelled for? <laughs> Bro, it's so embarrassing. I was fighting because you know what? Nah, I had this friend. Right. She was low key disabled. I ain't gonna drop her name though. Okay. But she was disabled and then it was this girl that would just be picking on her. Like, I Damn. don't fuck with that. So, um, shit, I don't know. Like, she, uh, it was bad. Like, she'd get bullied and then 
She ain't, and wasn't nobody really trying to have lunch with her type shit, so I just, we didn't go somewhere. So I ain't even talking about that shit. I, I didn't even want to be there anyway, so right. I just went with her, and then we would have lunch somewhere, and like, it was this media center in the center of the school. We just going that every, like, fifth period, so that was lunch. And then um, she would just keep telling me about it, and the bitch was, like, spreading rumors and shit. I really Damn. don't like that. That shit okay. got on the mosque. But she wasn't spreading rumors about me, but... That's my friend. She can't really defend herself because it's like, right, damn, right. She, her, heart, her heart don't beat like that. So um, one day we was on lunch and this bitch had walked up to me and she was like, she was like, oh, you were saying something about me, da 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 da. The old me, I'm going to tweak out. So I start tweaking out. I'm like, okay. what the fuck is you talking about? Like, I already do it to you. But then the dean had escorted me out. Then they told me that the girl that was bullying my friend had sent her over there to try to like, I guess take care of me or some shit. So I waited for her outside the door. And um, I ain't gonna lie, it was just so bad. It was so low vibration on me. But I waited for her outside the door and then shit, I don't know, I pressed that bitch and we started scrapping. Damn. Then the principal man came up, his peanut head ass, he wanna break up the fight. Why are you breaking up the fight if you're the principal, bro? Ah, uh, shit. So, shit. Long story short, bro, I stuck his ass. It was an accident. Oh, shit. And then he was just like, we, he sat me in that room, and then I was I was like, fuck, like, it's over. Like, I know it's over. <laughs> because it took a minute for them to come back. Oh, and I'm shit. like, fuck. So then, like, he came in there, and he was just trying to, like, I guess, talk down on a nigga. He was like, oh, you're so stupid. Like, are you crazy? Why did you do this? Right, right. Like, nigga, no, are you crazy, bro? Like, you gonna see this interview, and you gonna wish I stayed in your school, bro. Because, no, crazy. I'm not crazy, bro. Name one genius and ain't though. Hey, Kanye. Um, bro. <laughs> so yeah, he told me he he went press charges. Of, I just never came back to the school, so I just never came back. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. But that's why I met T. Scotty and we used to rap. Cause freshman year was virtual. Cause like, oh, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Twenty twenty, you went to school for us. So we was um uh, we had met there. We had changed Instagrams. We had made this song. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I love you, but that shit was so trash. Like, <laughs> he's like. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, you was doing your thing, but no, bro. No. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Y'all never put that song out? Hell, no. Nah. If he put that out, he gonna have to see me. <laughs> bro, if you put that song out, bro, you gonna have to see me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, bro. Okay. All right, so but we... Yeah. He's talented. For but sure. Y'all got any... Y'all got any new music coming out, though? Yeah. Okay. This song I did in um, Firehouse is called Money in a Bag. Okay. Um, it's about how I got but he ain't want it because he said I did too good on it. So he was Damn. like, well, that's your shit. So I was like, that's, all, that's really a compliment, too. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. But, um, now we do. We got some show on there. Okay. I'd love to hear a T. Scotty and Zella song for sure. All right, so um, we're getting closer to the end here, so I got these last two segments. I'm going to start off with this one. It's called Give Credit Where It's Loose. So, mm -hmm. you know, in Chicago, it's like certain artists may not like... <clears throat> tap in with other artists because they don't know how they feel about each other and yeah. whatnot. It's like, you know, it, it's not much unity. We're trying to bring more unity. So right. I kind of want to like ask you like, just like to say something positive about like a few artists that I can name. So I'm going to start off with YFG Fatso. I don't know. You don't know? I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. I'm do, sorry. Do you have anything, I'm sorry. Uh, do you not have anything positive to say to him? Yeah. I mean, well, obviously if you got mentioned, you're doing something right. So keep doing it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, second artist, Kashmir. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Like, for real. And like, when you had commented on my post that day, that meant the world to me. Because mm. you look good and you good at rocking for real. So All right, bet, bet. Next artist, Mellow Bucks. You are so lyrically talented. Like, I swear, it's like, it's funny how people overlook it because right. of like what you rap about, but I see you. Okay. I like it. Okay. I like that shit for real. Sure. I was listening to her all junior years. Damn. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Next artist, Chief Keith. I love you, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Chief Keith is so fire. Like, I swear to God, bro. I listen to um his older shit, though. I love right. that shit. All right. Well, that's all the right. real one, bro. This new shit hard too. Yeah, but that old salsa hit different. That old salsa hit different. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna give you one last artist. I'm gonna say only one, but yo. Rio, you are so real. Like, I met you in person once, but you're so real. Her energy is so, like, pure. 
And she can rap her ass off. For sure. She can rap for real. For sure. Alright, so this is the last segment. We call it the Chicago Wave Feedback. So we kind of just want to ask you, like, why do you support the Chicago Wave? I support the Chicago Wave because you're the realest nigga doing this shit. Like, you can't really name another nigga putting on from the underground. Like, not to call you the M-Rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's my fucking boy. Like, I, bro, I first found Chicago Wave when I was 14. I'm 18. It's crazy because I started the Chicago Wave when I was, like, what, 16. Right. Yeah. So, but bro, I knew bro when he was a minor. Like it hit different. Bro. Yeah, yeah. But Chicago Wave is real. He's fair. Very lenient. He doesn't like people be like he show favoritism to certain motherfuckers. No, he don't, bro. It's just some niggas are more consistent than other niggas. Like people don't understand that shit. We always kept it real. He's always been real. I appreciate that. Okay. What's one thing you could say you like about the Chicago Wave? I like that. I like how you treat women. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I really made it my mission to put women more like in the spotlight and right. kind of like give them like that support exactly. and make them like feel seen because you know we kind of like it's it's easy to forget women because it's like it's how society works it's like right. we're in a like we, we the in a, only thing yeah. most niggas remember about women is they body yeah period but the Chicago way is a feminist. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he probably don't know what he is. I probably am. Alright, I'm right here. You don't gotta sugarcoat it. I'm gonna ask you. Okay. What's one thing you don't like about the Chicago Wave? Mm -hmm. I don't like how your page got deleted. That shit. Damn. Bad. That shit made me mad too. I ain't fuck with that. Right. That's something <laughs> I like about it for real. But, um, no. I don't like how you be giving. People that don't be talking about shit a platform. I hate that shit. I'm not gonna lie, I hate that for you, man. Cause they be talking about shit like bro, it be some women that just be just the only thing I see them do on Chicago Wave is twerk and talk shit, bro. Damn. I've never seen them doing anything else with this stuff. Damn. Or like beefing or fake beef. Fake beef. Okay. It's like bro, I hate that, but it's a balance. Because as much as you put the Brain rot on there. You also put the real shit. Yeah, I try to put push a lot of positive stuff on there too. People don't notice it because people's minds are so they fixed. So it. Stupid, it's stupid. It's like if I post something that could be perceived as negative, they'll notice that before they would. they'll notice that before the positive shit. That's I put how up. people have been socially conditioned to view media. Like media is what's controlling the world right now. Right. And people have been conditioned to gravitate towards negative content. More than shit like hope core or some shit or the positive shit, they don't like it. Nah. They like trauma porn. Damn, trauma porn is crazy. They love it. <laughs> Alright, so we have been in here. So is there any final remarks, any last things you wanna get off your chest? Mm -hmm. Anybody you wanna shout out to? Yeah, shout out to Sad Boy Shaq. We just collabed and that shit is so hard. If I could play it for you right now, I would, but I respect my fellow artists. Shout out to all my friends. Shout out to Chicago Waves, my fucking boy. Shout out to my school that I graduated from. Because that song I made, Harlem Hoes, that's one of my biggest songs. Thank y'all for not calling police on me. And um, yeah, I'm dropping shit. I'm dropping an album next month. It's called The Sunset is Beautiful. Okay. It's, awesome. it's gonna be real, like, different. It's gonna be, like, completely different from Red World. It's gonna be, like, the opposite. Can't fucking wait for that. And, um, come to my shows. Okay, what can, what can people find you? You can find me. You can look me up. You can just look up Zella Red, X E L L A R E D. You can look it up on Google. You see some articles and share. You can look me up on Instagram and then I have a link in my bio for everything upcoming concerts, shit like that, music and shit like that. I'm shit videos. Alright, so. Zella Red, I really appreciate you for letting me pull up on you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, what, what do I want to what do I want to say? So you will always and forever be a part of the Chicago Wave. And if I see you again, I see you again. So we out. Thank you. For sure. Thanks for having me. All right.